Welcome back to the introduction to matinee. In this video, we are going to create our first door. Now, in the last video, we created a simple lift by using a mover, and as you might recall, that was an interp actor that automatically had a matinee sequence attached to it by way of the mover event. In this video, we're going to create our interp actor separately, and then we're going to have to go in and create our matinee sequence by hand. And that's a really nice thing, getting to see how everything's put together, you know, piece by piece, where before we didn't have to go in and put the group in and then the track in. All of that's going to be built up by us. That's right. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is bring in the meshes that we will need for our door, and those are to be found up here inside the generic browser. Now, I have a package that uh, is partially loaded called LT Doors that does ship with Unreal Tournament 3. And we have a couple of doors in here. We have the LT Doors uh, Doorway 4 Center and the Doorway 4 Sides. Let's just start with the Center. So I'll select that. We'll just move the generic browser out of the way. I'll right-click right here in the center of the door. And let's choose Add Actor. And make sure you choose Add Interp Actor. Don't choose Static Mesh. Don't choose Mover. Choose Add Interp Actor. So there it is. It appears... I think that was actually a pretty good placement, almost. I mean, kinda, <laughs> almost. Uh, well, here, I'm just going to stick my camera right in here. Normally, you do this in an uh, orthographic view, but I'm one of those people who just loves the perspective view. So there we go. So there it is, centered up, but it's a little bit short. So I'm going to take my draw scale 3DZ and set that to 1.6, and that's going to stretch it all the way up to the ceiling. Okay, now let's go ahead and bring in our sides. So I'll grab my sides and we can close the browser at this point. I'll right-click on the floor and choose Add Actor, Interp Actor. Uh, Once static. again. Exactly. Again, make sure that's Interp Actor that you choose. And we'll slide this to kind of line up with our door. And I'll have to position this, I'm sure, in the orthographics to make sure everything's where it needs to be. But I'll also take my Draw Scale 3DZ and set that to 1.6. Now, let's confirm that this looks good. Uh, we'll get out of this perspective view for just a minute. Take a look in the top view. In fact, I'm going to select my two doors, and let's make sure that we uh, hide everything that we're not uh, particularly looking at. So show selected actors only, and we can see that those are just a little bit misaligned. Very nice. So there's that, and it looks like maybe we could take this and nudge it in just a little bit. And let's make sure that they're aligned in this direction as well. That's starting. To, that's looking pretty good. Yeah, I think that works. Okay, so while we're here, let's uh, turn that off. I'm sorry, let's show everything. Excuse me. And we'll grab uh, this little side piece over here. We're going to duplicate it to make our other copy. I'm going to keep this fairly simple. I'm just going to hold down the Alt key and drag out a copy over here. Now let's grab all of our doors together. So... There's uh, that door, and then here's this door, and let's just do show selected actors only again. We'll grab this piece, and I'll rotate it around 180 degrees. Now, notice currently I'm uh, snapping my rotations to 90 degrees. If you need to change that, you can go under View, Rotation Grid, and set this to whatever you like. There should also be an option down here in the lower right-hand corner of your interface in the console bar, but because I'm recording at such a low resolution, you won't see it on my video. So let's line this up as well. And I think that's looking pretty good. So now let's come back over here into the perspective view. And, I th well, we're a little bit uh, short there. Well, it's a scale's good. Yes, everything's good there. No, go ahead and bring oh, it back. Yeah, I, door I, frame I, yeah and there we go. I had everything hidden. I'm sorry. <laughs> my brain went completely blank. That's quite okay. I saw nothing but darkness and started to panic for a minute. I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm afraid of the dark. What, what, do you, what do you expect? Okay, so that's looking pretty good. All right, so we have our actors which need to move. They are, in fact, interp actors, so they can be dynamic and they can be driven through matinee. Our next step is to create our matinee sequence. So, of course, that begins in Kismet. Now notice uh, that we have our original sequence that we created for our lift in this nice little subsequence. I'll actually show you how to set that up a little bit later once we get this sequence all knocked out. So let's start off by right-clicking, and we'll create a new matinee. Nothing really all that special about it. It's uh, just got its little matinee data included here. I'm going to double-click on it to open up the matinee editor. And the first thing I want to do is set up the amount of time that we're going to be using here. Now, uh, in general, I want this door to close at about a one-second interval. If you'd like something different, of course, you don't have to do that yourself. But I'm going to drag my little end time uh, flag over here to one second. So the door will open in one second, and when played backwards, it will then close in one second. Now, what we need to do is bring in a group that contains, uh, just for starters, the central part of our door, the center piece. 
So I'm going to minimize the Unreal Kismet window so that I can forget that I've minimized it and try to open it again with the button later. And <laughs> which he always does. Which I always do. I'm going to confirm that this central piece is selected here inside the doorway, and then I'm going to right-click here inside my group track list and uh, click Add New Empty Group, which is interesting because it won't be empty. Uh, we're going to call this Center Door and press Enter. Now, the group comes in with a green tinge to it. That's important to know, because if it comes in green, that means something is attached to it. We can confirm that here inside of Kismet. Take a look at what happened. We automatically get a center door input along the bottom of our node, and it's already connected to Interp Actor 8, which is the object that we had selected in the viewport when we created the group. It's important to note that, because that's a nice, easy way to get these things to connect up automatically for you. So once again, let's minimize uh, Kismet and jump back into Matinee. So we have our group in place, but a group is only part of the battle when it comes to animation. If we're animating the movement or the motion of an object, we need to add a movement track. So I'm going to right-click on our center door group, and we'll add a new movement track. So here's our track, and something interesting came along with it for the ride. We automatically get our first keyframe, our initial keyframe. Now, as a general rule, it is a good idea to have your object already placed in its initial position before you create your movement track. Doing anything else can sometimes lead to what we'll call irregularities, certain issues you might come across. So we've got our initial position in place. We've got the keyframe already recorded. The next thing we need to do is create our opposite keyframe, which will open this uh, door up. Now, earlier on our lift, you saw me go ahead and create a keyframe that had the exact same value. So we had no motion on the lift, and then we edited that keyframe to move the lift up into the air. What I'm going to do this time is do it in a kind of a different way, something a little bit more akin to uh, 3D animation keyframing as I'm familiar with it, and that is to move our time slider, and then we'll pop back over here into the viewport, and I'll lift my door up into the air until it, it's in its what I'll consider the open position, and then back here I'll click on my movement track and press enter. And now that has created a keyframe with our new motion in place. And as I scrub, you can see that door opening and closing. So excellent. We've actually got some motion in place, and that's all we really need to do. If, it, uh, if we wanted to change the nature of our motion, maybe if we didn't like the ease in, ease out, speed up, and then slow back down kind of motion, uh, now would be a good time to go into our curve editor and change that. But I think in the case of our door, that's going to work out really well. So at this point, Zach's about to go in and add another group. Now, these groups are associated with interp actors. It's very important to understand why, he's, why he is putting the two sides of the doors in a different group. Their movement animation is going to be different than that of the center door. Well, right. The two side pieces are going down. That's the right. The center piece is going up. If I put everybody into the same group, they'd all move in the same direction. You get that kind of effect like the door just slid up like a garage. Because they would all be using that movement track. That's right. So what we're going to do is deselect everything over here. In fact, just to be safe, I'm going to go to uh, Edit, Select None. And then I'm going to right-click here inside my group track list and create a new empty group, which I will call Side Doors. And notice this group comes in gray, which means it currently has nothing attached to it. If I expand Kismet, we can confirm this. Notice we just have side doors, and there's currently nothing attached to it. What I'm going to do is minimize the Kismet window. And over here inside my view, we'll select our left door. I'm going to hold down Control and select the right door as well. Back inside of Kismet, we'll right-click and choose New Object Vars using Interp Actor 10 and so on. So, boom, we get two new object variables associated with those two side doors, and I'll just drag an input connection from our side doors group into both of these actors. Let's go ahead and arrange things a little bit. I'll pull my matinee data out just to make sure everything's nice and easily readable. Okay. So there we go. Now if I jump back into Matinee, which I think is already open, uh, our side door still stays gray. You'll need to refresh Matinee. In general, it's just a good idea to close it and reopen it. And now you'll see that side doors is green, meaning that we have some objects attached to it. So now we, again, we want to animate the motion of the objects in this group, so we'll need a new movement track. I'll right-click and choose New Movement Track just like we did before, and just as before, we end up with a new keyframe. So let's go back to exactly what we did before. I'm going to take my time slider. We'll drag it all the way to the end of the sequence, which even though we haven't zoomed in or out, if we drag it all the way to the far right, 
Notice that we see 0.998 instead of one second. Now, in my case, that doesn't really matter because I'm currently set to snap to 0.1 seconds. If I press Enter to create a keyframe, that key automatically jumps to uh, one second flat. But if you're not snapping, that can be a problem, which is why if you've been watching the video very closely, you'll notice that in a lot of cases I zoom out a little bit so that I can see the entire range of my sequence while I'm working. All right, so uh, with that, let's go ahead and select our key, and we'll just edit this one like we did the very first lift sequence we created earlier. I'm just going to jump over here into my viewport, and I'll pull these doors down, say, to right about here. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and confirm that we have motion. In fact, we already know we have motion because we can see that little uh, 3D track. But if we scrub back through, we can see our door opening and closing. Very nice. Now, with that, really, we're done with Matinee for the time being. We can close out the Matinee editor. We can bring Kismet back up. Notice that I haven't tried to reopen it. I'm actually very proud of myself. <laughs> Good job, Zach. Now, we need some sort of event to make this happen. Matinee is, in and of itself, a Kismet action. It requires some sort of event to trigger it and make it play. Now, we have all sorts of things we could use to make this happen. We could bring in an actual trigger that we could use that would open the door. Uh, we could have it set to maybe when our player reaches a specific level of health. The list really goes on and on with all sorts of things we could set up. But what I'm going to do is bring in a trigger volume, which will work kind of like a proximity trigger for our door. So let's go ahead. For the time being, I'm going to close out matinee altogether to get it out of the way. Kismet. Kismet, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> All these terms. I'm going to take my perspective view and we'll maximize that. And if we just ooh, do a bunch of clicking and stuff pops up, what I want to do is just use my left and right mouse button and shoot down under the floor. You can see that I have my red builder brush hiding down here. And we're going to bring that up into the view. So there it is. Now, I don't know what this is currently set to in terms of size. I want this to be a 256 box, which is the default for the brush builder cube. So we'll go ahead and build that and close. Now, in the other viewports, so using my orthographics, I'm going to line this up on the door. So that looks pretty much lined up from there. It might need to go up or down a little bit, but actually we can confirm that in the other viewports. And that looks pretty good there. Let's say I think right about there is dead on. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just you know, just filling the area so that when the player walks up, he's going to step into this volume and trigger the door. That's right. The volume needs to run to both sides of the door so that if the player is close, is basically within the volume on this side of the door, he's going to be within the bounds of the box. And a quick way to help you, because sometimes this wireframe can be a little tricky to read because it draws on top of everything, make sure you switch on toggle brush polys. And there you can actually see where those polys are cutting in and get a clearer picture of how far out that volume is going to extend. When you're happy with it, and you might, need, you might want to expand it a little larger on your end, I think it's going to work out great for us. We're ready to bring in our volume, so we'll right-click on the Add Volume button and choose dun, 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 the Trigger Volume, like so. Now with that, I'm going to get the red builder brush out of our way, and we see this nice green bounding box, which because I still have toggle brush polys on, if I select it, we can still see the extent of that volume. For now, I'll turn that off because uh, I'll assume we're satisfied with it. Now, with this volume still selected, let's pop back into Kismet. I'm going to right-click and choose New Event using Trigger Volume 2, and this will be a Touch Event. And notice this has two outputs, Touched and Untouched. That translates to, is the player within the volume, or has he left the volume? That's really how that works. Now, let's select this event and some things we're going to set up. First thing, we are going to set the max trigger count to zero so that we can have this door open and close as many times as you want. If you forget to do this, your door will open, but it won't close. So we're going to take touch, which is when we enter the volume of the... Uh, volume. <laughs> nice. When we enter the volume, we're going to play. When we leave the volume, we're going to play in reverse, which should close the doors for us. And really, with that, I think we're set to test this out. So let's uh, close out our uh, Kismet window. And uh, I've just really quick, let's go to Tools, and I'm going to check the map for errors. This is going to take just a second. Okay, no errors, meaning we don't need to rebuild lighting or anything. So let's go ahead and play from here. All right, so things are looking pretty good. There's our lift. Hi. Now let's walk over to the door. Bink, the door opens. Very nice. Walk through and leave it. The door closes. So if, while we're within the volume, the door's going to open up, and then it's going to close. But there's only one problem I have with this is, you know, and now you guys can't hear our sound on this end. We have headphones that are actually in the floor right now, so <laughs> we can just barely make out the sound of the gun firing. But if you're following along, you've got the sound of the gun doing something, but your door is behaving silently. Actually, there's a couple problems with the door. Well, okay, what's, what's the other problem? 
Can you jump through it? Oh, yeah, I wasn't going to show him that yet. But that's, <laughs> well, it is a problem. It though. is a problem. You're absolutely right. So if I get just outside the volume, check this out. So, you know, this door, uh, I'm really scared of it. Dodge through it. Boom. We shoot right through it like it's wow, not right there. Never even opened. Cool. Now, why did it do that? Well, if you remember back to when we set up our lift, those interbactors come in by default with their collision property set to collide None, so it's not colliding at all, or no collision, I think, is the actual name of the, of the setting. So what I'm going to do is select all three of these door pieces. We'll press F4. Under collision, we're going to set collide to block all. We'll close this, and let's go ahead and give that a quick test before we do anything else. All right, so let's get right up on the cusp where the door starts to open. Oh, we're so close. Now we'll back out. Now let's try to dodge through it. Boom, we just you know, <laughs> face plant the door. So excellent. Now the door is actually stopping us and serves some sort of a purpose. That's excellent. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is add in a sound effect. Now you have some options here. You could play your sounds through uh, matinee using the soundtrack, and uh, that's certainly one way to do it. You could play your sounds using Kismet. Uh, by just triggering sound effects at certain times. You could use a combination of matinee and kismet by using the event track and having that lead out to uh, play sound actions. There's all sorts of ways to do this, but there's also the ability to do it within the interpactor itself, which I kind of like. I'm gonna, just going to select the door track. I don't necessarily think that all three of these pieces need to all be making sounds because they all move in unison. So we'll grab this main central door piece and double-click it. Let me collapse everything. And under Interp Actor, we have all of these different sound uh, entries. We have closed sound, closed sound, closing ambient sound, Opened sound, opening ambient sound, and open sound. Now, when you think about that for half a second, that's not confusing at all. Actually, okay, you got to think about it for a second, though. The fact that they're out of order does make that's it a right. little bit confusing. It does. <laughs> but you have a sound that plays when the door starts to open. You have a sound that plays while the door is opening. And you have a, a sound that plays once it is fully opened. You have another sound as the door starts to close, another sound at while it's in the process of closing, and a final sound when it finishes closing. So it's a total of six sounds that apparently they kind of scattered in there. But they work. They do exactly what they're supposed to do. But we need some sound cues that we can assign here. So I'm going to open up the generic browser. And I don't think that the package is already open, so let me go ahead and navigate to it. We'll go ahead and go to File, Open, and I already have the Sounds folder open inside my Content folder. So let's open up Sounds, and there is a Movers package, A underscore Movers. Now, these uh, are listed off. Let me go ahead and do this, too. I'm going to take my uh, resource types, and we're going to filter that down to just sound cues. So we'll just uncheck that and recheck that, which means I will have to select this package one more time. So now all I see are sound cues. And you can sample these with whichever one you want. I think uh, earlier I had settled on A Door Metal 03 as sounding particularly cool. So we're going to start with uh, Open Start Cue, and we're going to put that on the Open Sound. And notice we have Open Past Tense. We're going to put that, uh, we're going to assign Open Stop to that. Okay, so now we have close sound, so like the present tense of close. Or is that future participle? I, I, I don't know. I was never good at that stuff. So we'll start with close start, and then we'll do closed sound, and we'll assign that to close stop. There we go. So now we're done with that. We can close this. We can close the generic browser, jump into the map, and test this out. And now, if we can find the door... We have an opening sound and we have a closed sound, which, again, you guys aren't going to be able to hear on your end, but if you follow along with the video, you now have a really nice open and closing sound that's got a you know, mechanical whir to it. You can actually hear the thump when the doors open and close. And so you've got sound effects that are all set to go. Very nice. Now, with that, we have our simple door in place. It's completely playable. It's going to stop our projectiles and our players from going through it. And that is going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.